Hey, what's up guys? I'm Preach Horn and welcome to Prison Simulator. So this is the game that's coming out on Thursday, November the 4th. Now this is the type of game that Jinx and I would usually play together. However, since we already have several series going and I'm not currently playing anything by myself, I decided to check it out without Jinx because I really want to play this. And the reason is because, as some of you may know, I'm a former correctional officer. I was a CO for three years at a maximum security prison in Texas, so I feel like I could bring a unique perspective to the game. And in addition to that, we've played several of these job simulator games before, you know, farming simulator, the car mechanic simulator, you know, any of these simulator games. And out of all of those, I've never done those jobs before. This is the first simulator game uh, that I've seen where I've actually done the job before. So it was another reason why I really wanted to check it out. So we're gonna be hopping into this essentially blind. I did do a test playthrough uh, just to kind of test the sound out, uh, but I didn't play very far, maybe a couple minutes in really. And I also did not play the prologue or the demo which released uh, earlier. Uh, so hopefully this is not too difficult to just hop into. I guess we'll just have to find out. Uh, so we can pick our difficulty here. Uh, so I was an officer, I was a CO4. Uh, they ranked from CO1 to CO5. Uh, so I was kind of an upper ranking officer. Uh, however, I never did make it to sergeant. I never did apply for it. And I didn't uh, do the job long enough anyways. Typically about three years is about when you'll you'll start applying for sergeant. So yeah, I was just a little CO when I was uh, working at the prison. We're gonna do the sergeant difficulty, which is the normal difficulty. We won't go any more challenging than that, but they do have uh, higher difficulties, including a permadeath option, which I thought was interesting. Uh, but yeah, we're just gonna hop in to the uh, regular difficulty here. So I think we're gonna name our prison ADX Florence. And the reason why we're gonna name it that is because this is the only Supermax prison in the United States. Uh, there were some some other Supermax prisons uh, you know, a while back, but those were all closed. So this is the only one that's still open. And it's about an hour away from where I live. Uh, it's not that far away. It's here in uh, Colorado. So it's fairly close to where I live. And I, I actually considered applying to work here a couple years ago. I ended up working somewhere else. Uh, but I considered going back to working at a prison. And what this stands for is administrative. The AD is administrative. And the X is for max. So administrative maximum facility. Uh, and the Florence is the name. Every prison has like a, you know, a unique name. Uh, so we're not going to go through these because I already read them when I did my little test. Uh, but basically, it's explaining how to use the uh, prison creator. So we could create every single one of the prisoners that's going to be in our prison. Uh, it's not a lot of options. You just basically get to choose the body and then the skin. And then here you can choose the name and their voice and the backstory, uh, which will control their character, whether they're mild, neutral, or I think aggressive is, is the other one. Uh, but we're not going to create all 16. Instead of what we're going to do is we're just going to randomize all of them. And then we'll just take the number one prisoner. And maybe customize this one here. Just kind of give it uh, a look here. And this will be us. This will be Praetorian here. I've never been an inmate in a prison before. I have gone to county jail a few times. But I have not been an inmate in a prison. Uh, like a state penitent penitentiary or anything like that, you'd have to you have to do a serious crime to get yourself put in a state prison. I think it'd be fun to have one name here that we recognize. So this will be me. Uh, we're gonna have our shirt off here, and we're gonna be bald as I am in real life. I don't have a a cool tattoo like that, uh, but we're gonna have it for our character here because he's one of the few that has some sort of facial hair. And this is about as close as I can get to looking like me, I think. Uh, I, I'm not big on the stash there. It's kind of a strange look here, but we'll go with that. I'm not seeing anybody else who has facial hair. We need like a big old beard. I don't think that'll be fitting. It's the same facial hair anyways. Yeah, you're going to be stuck with the mustache no matter what. I think that character's tied to the mustache, so we'll go with this. At least we have a little bit of a beard here. All right. And our name will be Praetorian. Oops. And we'll just go with hijinks. So I'm not going to mess with the voice much. We'll just be the, the first voice here. Uh, because I actually turned the, the voice sound down a bit. Uh, because they don't actually speak English in this game. Uh, they just kind of speak like a, a gibberish. 
kind of like The Sims or something, or like a lot of these simulator games, I suppose. Uh, so the voice doesn't really matter that much, honestly. But this does matter. Uh, while the backstory, I don't know if that has a role, uh, the key here is the character. And we're gonna make ourselves a neutral. Although it doesn't look like we can change it, we're stuck at harmless. All right, that's a shame. I don't want my character to be harmless. We might have to actually pick a different character. All right, so now we got a uh, character who has the neutral. Uh, so let's just generate a different crime here. Um, not really liking any of these. I like this one. We broke into the prime minister's house. Yeah, we'll go with this one. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna only have this character be a unique character. All the rest of these will just be <laughs> random. All right, so let's go ahead and say we're finished. And another thing you can do is create the three gangs that are in your prison, and we are actually going to do these ones. Now, we're not actually gonna name them after real gangs. Let me see if I hit this. Yeah, we can have them all set up uh, so that uh, the uh, all the inmates will be randomized in which gang they're in, so we don't have to mess with that. And we'll just change like the, the icons and such. So let's see how we wanna do this. Is this like a, a wolf? I suppose that's a wolf. So we'll call them the wolves. I feel like squirrels didn't make a whole lot of sense there. Uh, so this is gonna be the other two gangs, we're gonna have the lions and the dragons. And I guess we'll be in the, the wolves here. All right, so we can say that we are finished. There's gonna be a little cut scene here. Prison Simulator. I'm excited. I'm excited to get started. So I had considered uh, naming all the inmates after patrons, but then I realized that some of the patrons might not want to be, uh, you know, in this this prison game. So I'm not sure if we can rename the inmates after we've already started. Uh, but if we can, then you guys can suggest some names down in the comments, and maybe we'll change those up. Again, though, I don't know if that's going to let you do that now that we've already started. Uh, so we can interact with this. I don't think we can do anything here. Uh, our objective is to talk to Richard Bryant. Now, as I said before, they don't have, they don't actually speak English in this. Uh, so we're just going to read it. Hello, you must be the new correction officer. I'm Richard. Nice to meet you. And we're going to say, nice to meet you too, Richard. So do you have any questions before we go to the warden? He wants to talk with you before your shift. And we're going to say that we don't have any questions. Okay then, let's go to the warden. One more thing, if you ever feel lost, use your map. It's under the M button. Okay, we got it. We'll go ahead and take a look at the map now so you guys see uh, what the whole prison looks like. I like that when you click on it, it shows you exactly what it is. So that's the, the morgue there. Uh, where are we at here? This is the execution block. Okay. I guess it makes sense for the morgue to be close to that. We got death row here. We got a prison yard. Yeah, you can see exactly where we're at. And here's the locker room. So yeah, you got the, the map. We'll probably use that quite a bit, though it's not a very large prison. Uh, the prison I worked at was much smaller than this, or excuse me, much larger than this. And I worked at a, a large one, very large prison. One of the largest in Texas, actually. Uh, so this is the warden's office. It's not as nice as a warden's office would typically be, uh, but this is a small prison, so. So you must be the new guy. I'm Kenneth, your new warden. Nice to meet you. How are you feeling? Nervous? I'm gonna say, I mean, we're probably incredibly nervous at this point. We're gonna lie. I'm glad to hear that. Confidence is really important here, and don't bother with formality. You can call me Mr. Warden. Well, let's get back to business. Here's your duties for today. You can check them in your journal, which is the J button. 
I'll mark it on your map uh, when you when you should go first or where you should go first. Excuse me. That didn't make any sense. Uh, after each routine, you have free time so you can rest a bit or check out the facility or just relax. We have a nice social room with coffee and stuff. And when you're done with duties, go to the briefing room to report your day. I think that's all. Any questions? Uh, I don't think we're going to have any of these questions. And so this is the furthest that I got, guys. So I went and talked to the warden here. And uh, after this, we're just going in completely blind. This is the infirmary. And it looks like we don't have any sick or injured inmates here. Don't have a doctor or anything working either. A lot of inmates would like to go to the infirmary because everybody who worked there was female. And they didn't get to see females very often. And so they all liked to go into the infirmary just to, to see the ladies. So you'd have a lot of inmates trying to go there over some BS just for that reason. Uh, so food. Uh, we can buy food if we need it. Eating restores our HP. Go to the vending machine and choose something. Okay, this seems like a lot of, a lot of stuff you gotta do just to eat something. Uh, but yeah, I guess we'll go ahead and purchase something, some food, just in case we need it. Uh, very authentic here already. Uh, we're eating out of, uh, out of any machines. Now, officers usually eat in the chow hall, just like inmates, though we, we have our own chow hall. But it's essentially the same food. Now, sometimes they'll make different food, but yeah, it's still a garbage, horrible food. Uh, what do we want here? Chips are $15, and this is also very authentic. Vending machines ripping you off. So I feel like they're doing a good job with an authentic experience here. Uh, let's go with... Uh, okay, so they each heal. They really show how much they heal down here. Got it. All right, well, we'll go with the milk chocolate then. So that we have a little snack in our pocket in case we need it. Won't get a drink or anything. You did see our money there, uh, which we didn't have much. I don't know what all this is. Just clicking buttons now at this point. All right, so that axis is that. This is our inventory here. We only have $6. So you can play this game in a variety of ways. You can be a good, solid correctional officer, do your job as you should, or you could be a crooked correctional officer, and uh, I don't know what all that'll allow you to do, uh, but you can like break the law and be a, a horrible officer. I imagine you could be like a friendly officer as well. Uh, which is a term that we use in the prisons. We say an officer is friendly when they're friendly with the inmates, when they, you know, basically are so friendly with the inmates they can't effectively do their job anymore. Uh, they can't enforce the rules because the inmates don't have that level of respect for them. Uh, they don't have that authority to, to enforce the rules, nor would they want to. Uh, so that's what we call friendlies. People just can't do their job right. All right, just wanted to go through all these. And our current objective is to check attendance, go to the cell block. So basically we're doing a count. Counting is something you do constantly in the prison. Making sure you have accountability of all the inmates is understandably incredibly important. So we're not going here. Let's just take a look and see where we're at right now, just so we know. So this is cell block. Okay, so we can't click on this, I see. So is this all cell block, B, uh, cell block B? Yeah, that's what it seems like. This is all cell block B here. This is the back end of it. Oh, okay. I see. So this is like high security here. And this is like GP, general population. All right, so routine attendance check. Your first task is to check the attendance. Go to the duty office, which is to the left of the entrance, and use the lever to open the cells. Then choose a clicker. Yeah, so we are counting. Uh, go to each of the prisoners and count them with it. When a prisoner does not go to the assembly, speak to him to find out why he is not cooperating. React when prisoners are not behaving properly. Use one of the tools of direct force. Choose their weapon from the selection wheel. Oh, I didn't see how we choose our weapon. So what we have, we have our hands. We don't have any guns because guns are not allowed inside a prison. I don't know if it'll actually replicate that, but... Uh, in a prison, you don't have guns anywhere inside the fences. They're only on the outside. Oh, here's Praetorian hijinxes. Or is it this one? It's that one. All right, so this is Charles. Charles here. Here's Praetorian. And he has trouble hitting the toilet. No, it's difficult, man. All right, so that's us. 
So yeah, this is like general population. Uh, that's why we can open up the cells and let them all out. Now it said to the left, I think it's over here. So I blew right past it. In case of riot, do not lock. Do not lock in here. They are coming. Billy was here. And that must have happened in the last riot. Alright, so the clickers are in here. I just want to kind of mess with everything, see what we can mess with. Can we play with the computer at all? Okay, so we can, you know, get the attendance list. Nothing else that we can do here. Alright, so all the prisoners should be out. And can I take this soda? I feel like that's kind of messed up. That was somebody else's drink we just snatched. Like it was just there for anybody. Alright, so we have to get our clicker out so we can count these guys. Alright, so I guess we'll start over here. And looks like we already have a fight. If a prisoner does not stick to the rules, he should be punished. But first you need to pacify him with a nightstick or taser. In some cases, a talk is enough, but usually not. Select the walkie-talkie and go to the aggressive person. Use the walkie-talkie and choose one of the available punishments. The prisoner will get a penalty marker over his head. This prisoner can't be punished anymore today. Well, that's not accurate. Sometimes you gotta punish a prisoner multiple times per day. Uh, if you choose solitary confinement as a punishment, talk to the prisoner after you have finished your routine and take him to the marked solitary cell, then lock the door. Okay, so where's the fight? Oh, there it is right there. Oh, they're about to jump somebody. Where the other guy's running? Uh, so this is your primary tool of direct force. You can't kill with it, but you can pacify the problem prisoner. To attack, press the assigned attack key. To perform a strong attack, hold down the assigned attack key. That uses stamina. You can also protect yourself from blows. You must hold down the assigned defense, uh, assigned defense key, which will be the right mouse. And holding the guard takes away stamina, stamina gradually. All right, so who are they? Okay, they're jumping this guy. Why peas? Really? Oh, we're just fighting three inmates here. We got other officers to help us, right? <laughs> All right, so we got these guys dazed. Uh, so I think we need to to now punish these guys with the walkie-talkie, I believe it said. All right, so let's see what punishment we're going to give them. Oh, wait a minute. Can we not do that? Oh, okay. You will be punished for your unacceptable behavior. He's surprised by that. This is exactly how inmates act. Uh, we can say the penalty of isolation, no leaving the cell, no pass, no phones, or I was wrong. All right, well, if we're beating up a, another inmate, we'd probably give him isolation for a time. Uh, we're going to say noon leave in the cell because we got three people involved here, and I don't know how many isolation rooms we have. So we'll just say no leave in the cell for the day. They're going to lose all their, their day room time. And so we want to make sure that we give the, the same punishment for all the inmates. Oh, so now he's going to jump me. Yeah, he's going to try and box us now. Because <laughs> that's what really happens. Assaulting a staff member is like a serious offense. It's like extra jail time. Like extra prison time. And so now he's going to get locked up. Because this is serious. Can we... Oh, we can't punish him again. That's right. And see, that's why that mechanic doesn't make any sense. Because <laughs> he's already in trouble, so he might as well... Uh... Where's the other guys that we punished? Or we need to punish? Alright, it looks like they just made it. We just happened to get the last guy who got knocked out, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, because I don't remember uh, who it was. Uh, that's something you always want to to make sure you pay attention to. Is which inmate committed which crime, so you can identify him later. And we failed miserably in that. I'm going to bring you guys in with my failure. Alright, so this inmate is not coming out, and he needs to come out. So let's talk to him. Let's see what the problem is. Yeah, I'm talking to you, buddy. And so we're going to try and ask him. I've had company myself for some time, but I don't think anyone else sees them except me. Is it possible that he's a ghost? Okay, so we're going to say ghosts do not exist. I think you're right, maybe I'm just dehydrated or something. But vampires are real. Sure, buddy. 
All right, so when you hover them over them, you can see all their their stats here, the gang they're in, the character, the amount of respect they have on for you, and who they they hate. So they hate other inmates, I guess. And you can also see what crime they're in for. Now, in a real prison, you don't typically get to see what crime the inmates commit. Uh, that's usually not something that is made available to the officers, so that you don't like discriminate against them. You know, maybe easy on somebody who committed a lighter crime, be harsher on somebody who committed a crime you're appalled with. And so usually I get to see the crimes uh, if you are going out of the prison with the inmate, like bringing them to the hospital or something like that. Uh, so let's go and click this clicker and count the first inmate. We're going to count Praetorian, which you'll notice he's been a very good inmate. He didn't engage in that fight. We had any trouble with him. All right, we got another inmate who doesn't want to come out, though. So let's go ahead and talk to him. Why aren't you at roll call like the others? Are you on drugs? Your pupils are so big. All right, so we're gonna have him come out. The rules apply to everybody, of course. Now the prison I worked at, we did not have clickers. Most prisons do, uh, but we didn't. We didn't use them. We counted by paper instead resulted in a ton of miscounts. Constant miscounts, actually. And count time ended up being way longer than it had to be. So we're gonna count this guy here. But we had, during the daytime, you'd only count three times. But at night, you'd have to count like seven or eight times if you worked the night shift, which I never did. While I work night shift in security, now that I work security, I don't, uh, <laughs> he said, no wiener watching here. I guess he is just trying to take a pee. But still, it's count time. You should have took a piss before. Uh, so we're going to say, haha, get out. You need to pay me to watch this kind of stuff. All right. All right, so let's go to count Bruce Brown. Oh, I, I didn't notice that uh, they were being crossed off of, over there on our checking attendance. And, and that's one of the reasons why we did the paper count. Is so that you're actually counting the person, you had to check their ID. And uh, you're actually counting that that person is there rather than just straight numbers. Well, that's a free time introduction. Now it's your free time, you can play mini games or do some side quests. When you notice that someone has an exclamation point above his head, it means he has a quest for you. By doing side quests, you can earn money and gain respect. Other icons like fist or clouds are connected to tasks which you have to complete, beat someone up, and that's a character with a fist icon, although that's not a fist icon, or talk to somebody, and that's the cloud icon. Uh, the tick icon above the prisoner's head means that you have completed your task and you can talk to him about your payment. Check the map to see where you can find mini games and side quests. You can skip your free time by interacting with one of the available benches in the hall. After a second, you'll be able to start the next routine from the day plan. All right, interesting. So we'll have to take a look at what what all we can do in our free time. I do think it's interesting that we have free time right now because of the fact that we just started today. We have not been at work for very long. But yeah, what happens when you do the use the clicker for your account is that an inmate will like move from another location and get counted and kind of take the place of another inmate who's trying to do something wrong or two inmates that are just like you know switching places uh, so that they can you know be in a certain location of the prison you know usually to have access to a certain prisoner or something for any number of things uh, so let's just see what all of our choices are here so we know that we can we can wait here this is a shooting range so we can practice our shooting or we can go to the prison yard and work out of it I'm not seeing any actual like mission jet, probably because we just started here. I think we're gonna work out. We're far more likely to use our muscles in this prison than we are ever to use a gun. So I think it would be wise to to work out a bit. Plus, I enjoy working out. I exer I exercise pretty regularly. Lift weights. Okay, we're outside here. All right, so yeah, we're all prison yards all outside. So are we uh, gonna use the, the same weights as the inmates? 
That's interesting. We're just gonna go work out with them? That's not how this would work at all. Uh, looks like there's also a potential quest here or something. Uh, at the gym, you can improve your statistics as far as the purchase equipment allows. At the moment, you can increase your stamina by doing exercises on the bench. Go to the bench and interact with it. Also, we don't get muscles. Oh, we're just going to kick this guy off. <laughs> He's got an itchy ass. Yeah, we're just going to kick him off. All right, so we'll see how this goes. Huh. A little bit harder than I thought it was. Oh, we gotta do the arrows. I'm doing A and D. My bad. I was about to say, it's not working. Sorry this is a little bit loud. I do have a mechanical keyboard. Which is fairly loud. Alright, so that was just okay. That's a good one. It's interesting that it increases our stamina rather than our strength, though. Let's try doing two hands and seeing how this goes. Oh yeah, that's a lot easier. We gotta do the 12 reps? Okay. It's because we're using such low weight. Now, personally, when I work out, I do reverse pyramids for my bench press. It's my preferred method. So I start heavier. I start at about 285. And I do a lot less reps with that, of course. No, oh, it depends on the day, but anywhere from four to six or so. It's not like a full set of ten or anything. And then I go down by 15 pounds for each rep, or for each set, excuse me. We just gained plus 20 stamina. Nice. Yeah, I go down by 15 pounds for each set until the end where I start going down by about 20 pounds, doing a total of about eight sets, seven to eight sets. Can we keep working out? Or is that all we can do here? Yeah, we can increase the stamina by another level. We do actually have strength training. Uh, interesting that the bench press wasn't wasn't that. Maybe it's going to be over here somewhere. I'm not seeing any other workout equipment. Yeah, that's interesting. You'd expect that this would be the uh, the bench here. Uh, would be the, the strength training. I guess it's just because you're using such low weight. It's not very much weight at all. Uh, but yeah, I do the reverse pyramids. And I'll uh, slowly move down. Uh, in weight and increase my reps until by the last set I'm doing anywhere from like 14 to 15 reps uh, with a lot less weight. Some people don't like reverse pyramid workouts or don't like pyramid workouts at all and I can see why they don't. Just my personal preference. I like to lift up really heavy weights and it's really the only way to, to do it and, and get a good workout. I do a warm-up set because uh, that's one of the, the biggest issues with the, the reverse pyramid. You know what? We have some health issues. Our health is a little bit lower, so we're going to eat a snack real quick. We have all these snacks to eat. So yeah, we'll go ahead and drink this. Oh, you don't have to do anything weird with this. You just, okay. You just press it. All right, so that put up our health a little bit. I think that's good. But yeah, the, the biggest issue with the, the reverse pyramid... Let me make sure I'm going the right way here. Yeah is that you're lifting up these really heavy weights you know from the beginning of your workout and your muscles aren't warmed up yet so that's kind of the biggest issue with them uh, so what i do is i do some warm-up sets with a uh, much lower weight i start with my warm-ups about 205. Uh, welcome to the shooting range here you can relax by training your print training your aim go to the selected stand to start every stand has a different game mode choose one of the available weapons and shoot targets according to the rules of the selected mode can we also do some cleaning is that what's going to increase our strength? Let's make sure that door's closed when I have any inmates coming in here before we open this up. Alright, so you can't actually access the, the weapons or anything here. You just go straight to the, the little area, the shooting area. Oh, there's a reason why this was highlighted. We cannot use this here because we're no longer on our free time. Uh, we are in our next task, uh, which this is our, our daily task here. We did our free time, so now we have to clean the prison. Makes sense, uh, because we're the new officer, we're the rookie, so they would would have to clean it. Though, in a real prison, it's the inmates that do the cleaning. That's one of the nice things about working at a prison, is that the inmates do a lot of the, the hard work. Whenever we need anything carried, 
anything cleaned. They do it with a few exceptions. What do we need this here for? Do we need to clean anything else? Oh, okay. We need to sponge down these nasty chairs. Oh, somebody got shot or something. Alright, so we'll just cl keep cleaning this. I don't know if I need to actually target up here. Yeah, might need to target where it's actually dirty. Alright, so that looks good. We've cleaned the shooting range. So now we have to clean the locker room, the reefing room. And that looks like the only locations we have to do right now. But yeah, sometimes uh, inmates can't touch certain things, like uh, you know, other inmates' uh, property. In that case, you would have to carry it. But usually you make them carry their own property. But let's say they, you know, got in a fight or something, they're locked up somewhere, and they're getting moved, then we would have to pack their property up and move it. Because other inmates are not allowed to touch their property. So you sometimes have to like, you know, do the physical work. But usually the inmates do it. Particularly the cleaning. I can't think of any instance where I had to clean ever at the prison. Yeah, I don't think I ever cleaned there. Alright, so we'll mop the floor first. I keep feeling like I need to click it, but it's just the E. Alright, then we'll use the sponge to Maybe this is not blood, I don't know. I don't know how the briefing room got all bloody. I don't know what they're doing in here, but... Yeah, you do not have to clean as a correctional officer, so... Don't let that, uh... Stop you from doing the job. There's plenty of other things to stop you from doing that job. It's a rough job, it's a stressful job. Alright, so we have free time again. And since we can improve our skills, I don't know why we wouldn't do the free time. Uh, I wanted to do the shooting range before when we weren't able to since we had a task to do, but now we can do the, the shooting range. This is the sprint, by the way. I like how it gives you the kind of the feeling of acceleration a little bit. You can actually turn that off if you don't like it, but I like it. All right, so we're going to go in the shooting range here. Again, not something you'll find in a real prison. What are our choices? Is just the pistol here? Okay, yeah, it's just the pistol. Oh, okay. So this is how you choose which stand you want to do. And so this one is, you have to destroy X targets to gain as many points as you can. Well, this one is, you have to destroy as many targets as you can in X seconds to gain the points. And this one is, the targets appear in a fixed position. You have to destroy them as fast as possible to gain the points. Okay. We'll just do the, the stand one, I suppose. And we can use the riot gun or the rifle. I suppose we'll use the riot gun. Aim by moving the mouse to take a headshot. Press or hold left mouse. Press right mouse to switch aiming mode. When all the am ammunition is expended, the weapon will reload automatically. Okay, so we can aim down the sights. Do we get more points for headshots or does it matter? It seems like I didn't... Oh, wait a minute. I'm getting, uh, how are we missing these targets? Maybe you just gotta hit them more than once. Or maybe you have to hit that red circle. Yeah, maybe that's what's going on here. Alright, so we should just aim center mass here. Oh, reloading. Is this the timed one? I didn't know which one I picked. I don't know how we did. That's a new record. <laughs> we 100% accuracy, 56 points total. And with that, we have reached the next level, or level two. So I'm not entirely sure what the levels pertain to, uh, but you can see that our respect has been increasing. Our respect with the prisoners is not very high, 41.6%, but our respect with the prison guards is at 49.9%, probably because we cleaned up that nasty mess they, they had over here. It hadn't been cleaned for ages. And we have $26, so I think we're getting paid for, for all the tasks that we're doing as well. Alright, so the next task is to go to the workshop and get the prisoners from the cell block. So at our prison we actually had multiple workshops where the good inmates, so to speak, uh, the ones who, you know, acted right, could work in it. 
Uh, go to the workshop, select some prisoners using the clicker first, and then we'll be ready for an assembly. If, if you indicate the maximum amount of people to work, choose the follow me command, and the prisoners will go to the workshop with you. Okay, so the tab. I think that's how you select commands. Okay, so that's what this is. Follow me, final warning, and rally. Got it. Okay, so we need to take as many people as we can to the workshop, call a meeting, and select prisoners with the clicker. So to call the meeting, is that wanting us to, I mean, all the cells are open. I think we can just go to them. Let's find out. I'm about to punch this guy in the back. <laughs> so if I click on him, Okay, so that selects him. I don't actually want this guy, because he's the crazy guy. I don't think he's the one you'd want to take to the uh, to the workshop. Uh, but he is harmless, though. Uh, Praetorian's taking a nap here, but he's going to the workshop anyways. We're going to bring him with us. So we've got two. We're not going to bring any inmates that have given us trouble in the past, or anybody taking a poop. This guy's sleeping as well. This guy's just washing his hands. We'll bring him. I already have a hand washer. He's pooping. Oh, he got up. He really wants to go. All right, so bring him with us. Charles Shepard. Oh, he's in trouble. He's not allowed to leave his cell. Everybody's pooping right now. All right, so I guess we'll just take this guy here. Oopsie. <laughs> I selected him. I didn't mean to select him. I meant to click on him. Uh, Bruce Gomez. So these are all who we're going to take with us. And we're going to tell him to follow us <laughs> to the workshop. So what was really cool about the workshop on our prison, though, is these inmates, they were incredibly skilled at uh, making all sorts of uh, different things. And you actually paid them real money, and so they made real money. You had to use that money to buy any, uh, uh, you know, any of the parts or uh, uh, resources or whatever that they needed to make this stuff. And yeah, they can make all kinds of cool things. Like they'd make uh, all the gear for the officers, like the belts and, and all that kind of stuff. Because outside of your uniform, uh, our our prison did not provide you with with much. Uh, I think it was just the uniforms, like a name badge. That's pretty much it. Uh, and then you know certain things that you would need on the pod, like if you had like a stab vest or something like that. Uh, but other than that, like you, uh, you had to buy everything yourself. Uh, so you know your your belt where you'd put all your equipment on, you had to purchase that yourself. And uh, the the ones you'd get from the prisoners were a far higher quality for a much better price than anything you'd buy out here in the in the free world. Uh, now go to the locker on the right of the entrance, take out your chosen tools, and go to each of the convicts to give them a tool to work with. Uh, make sure everyone works. If someone is loafing around, reprimand him or use direct force. Prisoners have to work for a determined time, but if they work longer, the prison will earn money. And that was why they, they allowed the inmates to do this, is because a, a percentage of the money that the prisoners charge, which they determined how much they're going to charge with the officer, it was like a negotiation that you did based on the job that you wanted. And uh, the, the prison got a percentage of the profit uh, that they made, so that was the reason why the prison did it. And again, only certain inmates could work in there. That would be G1, first of all, I think. G1 or maybe G2. Uh, but yeah, they had to be like a, a better. Again, I, I say these things in, in quotations here because they're all inmates. Oh, they had to be like a better inmate that acted acted right and uh, hadn't been in trouble a long time. It could be trusted around tools. Uh, so I just want to go through these again just to make sure I know all the buttons. Yeah, that's E. That's easy. We know all that. All right. Just want to make sure there's nothing I wasn't, wasn't aware of. And so yeah, you keep the tools locked up. And this is exactly how you do it in a prison. They're not going to have access to them without you. Do we need to take everything? The tools are located in the storage compartment to the right after entering the workshop. I guess we're going to take everything. Yeah, we're taking everything. And then we're going to give the tools to the prisoners. To assign them, we talk to each of the prisoners. Okay. So this guy, we're going to want to give him something safe. The safest thing we have probably the file yeah we'll give him the file uh, Praetorian a little bit of preferential treatment here um, I'm not gonna trust him with the knife though he likes to hammer 
I always enjoy a little bit of hammering. Uh, Anthony here. I don't know anything about this guy. You know, we didn't really look at like any of their what their uh, crimes were or anything. Uh, we will give him the wrench, I suppose. Uh, this guy here is here for poaching. He's here for trying to steal a dog. Okay. And so, I don't think it matters which one we give any of these guys. We'll just give him the screwdriver. And then I guess the last guy here will get the, the knife. They're just whining and griping, aren't they? Okay. So this is, they would not be whining in, in a real workshop. Because uh, again, they're there, because uh, they want to be there, and they're, they're making money. Oh, but that doesn't seem to be how this workshop is running. So we need to make sure that the prisoners work when someone loiters around, bring them into line through conversation first, and if necessary, by force. So just keep our eye on all the inmates. Is Praetorian not working? It seems like he's not working. <laughs> Stop slacking off, man. He says I'm taking a break. Is that a crime too? You work part-time, you don't need breaks. We're not trying to lose any respect. Okay, so we're just gonna, we're not gonna push this. You gotta, you know, pick your fights. Choose your battles. Uh, we're gonna say, okay, but don't just stand here for too long. And and that's, that's the key thing. Uh-oh, what's this guy doing? Seems like he's trying to get in a fight or something. I don't, I don't know what that's about. I remember they told us something about that. He's working though, so I'm not gonna harass him. Even though I'm not entirely sure what that's about. Oh, and a fire has started. When a fire starts, you have to react as fast as possible. Find the nearest extinguisher and pick it up with E. Direct the, the stream at the fire. All right, so he's working. We'll check that before we go. Did he start this fire? Oh, this guy's running. All right, so we need to go get this fire extinguisher. We're gonna run. And direct it at the base. Which happens to be this. These boxes. Boxes caught on fire. I'm not sure how that happened. Now, when the minimum time is reached, you can call people to an assembly by choosing the rally command. You can also wait and let them work overtime. It will give you more money. So we make money from these inmates? Okay. That seems like it's just open to corruption. Oh, he helped. That's nice that the other COs help. Alright, so we put the fire out. This seems like more important. This is giving us like notifications of like... <laughs> It just doesn't seem that important, honestly. Oh, do I need to put it back? Can I put it back? Is that a possibility? It is. We don't want to leave that sitting on the floor. And Praetorian is still sitting there doing nothing. Alright, well time is up. We're going to let them work a little bit longer to make us more money. They can loiter if they want. This is overtime, essentially, so... Yeah, we'll just make a little bit more money, I suppose. Yeah, we're over here dealing with a the fire. They're giving me notifications about the next objective. It seems like we should probably handle the, the fire first. It seems like something really serious. It just must happen all the time at this prison. All right, so we made about 25 bucks, so we're going to go and rally. I think that's that's good. Uh, so let's go and rally. Get everybody back on over here. Make sure we have everybody. And then what we're going to do now is take all of the tools... Make sure they all have them. I already see somebody's missing a tool. Alright, so yeah, we're going to take all the tools back and put them back. Of course it would be at the guy at the back, the last line here that we have to deal with somebody missing. Maybe he'll pull it out of his pocket or something, but I'm assuming that they're going to make us like search him or something. Yep, got to get the tools back. He's happy to be done with work today. And then Bruce Gomez. Uh, maybe the fact that he didn't have the tool in his hand, yeah, it's irrelevant. Okay. I just saw he didn't have it in his hand. I thought he was going to try and try and steal it. Obviously, it doesn't work out because, uh, you know, all these tools are assigned to them by name. So we know who has them. Uh, after taking back all the tools, go to each prisoner and search them. At the bottom of the screen, you can sometimes see eye icons. I've been wondering what this was about. Uh, that means you're being watched by a prisoner or by a guard. Oh, okay. So the number is probably how many of them. Yeah, the number next to the icon tells you how many prisoners and or guards are watching you. Okay, I've been wondering what that was. That makes sense. So if you wanted to, like, say, commit a crime or something like that, then you'd want to know who's watching you. 
Uh, when you keep contraband for yourself, when you're being watched by a guard, it will end with an unpleasant talk. Same goes for a prisoner, especially when you take away his contraband. Okay, so we gotta shake him down. Uh, normally you would do a strip search in this scenario. I don't think it's gonna make us do that. To search a prisoner, approach him and hold down F. If you find nothing, you can search another prisoner. So we're just gonna do a pat down search. Uh, but coming out of the workshop, you would not probably not just do a, a pat down, honestly. You can strip search him. Because pat down can only reveal so much. Um, yeah, my day's fine. No complaints, man. And yet something's wrong. Oh man, it's, it's nothing to worry about. It's a long story. He's not gonna have plenty of time. Like, no, I don't, man. We're doing a pat search here. And a good sense of humor. Have a nice day. Uh, oh, okay. That's what it is. I talked to him instead of searched him. Alright, this is the F. Oh, that's how we search. <laughs> Alright. We found contraband. Uh, dried beef. It's legal. It's worth $13. He's probably not allowed to have it here. We're gonna leave it on him, guys. I mean, not allowed to have food here in the workshop. This would be one like, hey, next time, Charles, don't bring food to the workshop. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and search Praetorian. You know he's got contraband. There's no way he doesn't. Yep, he's got nails. This is illegal. Um, we're gonna go ahead and, and secure these. I, I'm not sure the difference between secure and and take. We'll secure it though. He said, no, no, please don't take that. How did I know that Praetorian was gonna have contraband though? Uh, so we can take a bribe, but we're not going to. Uh, I can say, I don't know, how much are you giving? Take a bribe. He say, no way, I'm com confiscating it, end of story. We'll lose respect to him. Or you say, okay, I'll pretend, it, pretend I'll see nothing and gain respect. This is a dangerous weapon. The things you can make with nails. Uh, so yeah, we're definitely going to confiscate this. This could end up in a, a fellow officer's face. All right, so we took that. We lost a lot of respect with him. Uh, his respect with us is now at 42%. It's actually the same, isn't it? Interesting. Did we lose it with... I'm not sure who we lost it with. But it almost seems like we lost respect with the prisoner gu prison guards for some reason. Maybe because they saw I didn't take that contraband, but it was legal contraband. Uh, this guy has screws, so we're going to secure that as well. Sorry, man. We got to take this out. Why are you trying to take screws out of here for? So he's trying to make a deal. So yeah, his respect actually did drop. And we're gaining respect with the, the prison guards right now. I assume we lost some when I let that guy keep the the food. Most likely, did I not finish it? Or did he just not have anything? He didn't have anything. That's good. He's the only inmate so far that didn't. We found some more screws. All right, so same thing here. We're confiscating it. And so yeah, I'm guessing the reason why we lost that respect though is, you know, looking at us, we're friendly. Uh, we, uh, we let him keep the the food when we knew he wasn't supposed to have it. But again, you gotta pick your battles, guys. You gotta pick your battles. Uh, so we do we have to tell him, them to come with us? Yes. Alright, so follow me. And back to the cells we go. So I'm not entirely sure what this area is for because, yeah, there's, there's no inmates here. I was thinking this was a high security situation. Maybe it is. Maybe this is a solitaire. Solitary, excuse me. I said solitaire. Uh, the solitary. There's one inmate in here, but well, not many. Yeah, I was thinking it was high security. And I worked high security for eight months. And then the rest of my, my time there, you know, two years and some months, I worked in general population, which again, this is the GP situation here. And today, if you complete all your planned routines or emergencies, go to the briefing room to the end of the day. All right, so they'll all go back to their cells. And uh, we're going to go to the reefing room. We finished our first full day at work here, and it went pretty quickly. Uh, I remember when I was working in the prison, these days were ridiculously long. Uh, we had 12-hour shifts uh, at my prison, which most prisons have 8-hour shifts. Uh, but our prison had 12-hour shifts, and it was it just felt like the day was never going to end. And then when you count in the fact that it was actually more than 12 hours, because I didn't count the briefing, the morning briefing, which was 30 minutes, so it was actually 12 and a half hours. And then they also don't count the time it takes to, 
sure where the briefing is. Did I go past it? Nope, it's right here. Uh, but yeah, they also don't count the uh, the time it takes to go through security in and out of the prison, which could sometimes take a really long time, especially in the morning uh, when everybody's coming into work. Uh, so yeah, it was way longer. It was about 13, 13 and a half hour day. It was ridiculous. Uh, so Barry Scott, who we're reporting here, two, all done. Uh, yes, it's over for today. So we see our progress for day one. Uh, we got up to level two. We earned $36 plus 10 here. I think that's from the extra hours we allowed them to work. Uh, we increased the respect with the guards by 8%, prisoner respect by 1%, and decreased the riot risk probably because we took all those those weapons. I said not bad, but could be better. Search five prisoners, beat three prisoners, uh, extinguished one fire, and did four routines. All right, I think this is a pretty good first day, honestly. All right, so we'll see what happens after your first day. Okay, it looks like you just move on to the next day, start out here in the locker room. Uh, so if we were to kind of take a look at what our, our next day is going to be, we are going to have different tasks today. Well, that's awesome. Uh, I figured that there was quite a few different tasks we'll be doing here. Uh, so for day two, we're going to check parcels. Uh, we're going to have some free time. We're going to release the prisoners. Releasing prisoners. I wonder what's what's this for. Like we putting them out in the yard or something? Uh, then we're going to have more free time, and then we're going to do the evening head count. Okay. That's going to be the next day. Um, but unfortunately, we we're only able to get through one day in this first episode. I think it didn't help that I did a lot of talking. Probably should expect that in the series uh, because... I have not worked in prison in a long time. See, I, I quit at the prison to go to college to use my GI Bill, which was very close to running out. Uh, so I wanted to use it. And so I quit in 2011. It was the same year that my son was born. And so it's been over 10 years. Yeah, uh, over 10 years now because it was the summer of 2011. Uh, so it's been over 10 years since since I worked at the prison. A long time. Uh, so it's it's interesting, you know, playing this game and uh, kind of reminiscing over that that experience. And we'll continue talking about my experience as a correctional officer throughout this series. We'll definitely be having some more videos. I'm enjoying it so far. Uh, it's one of the better simulator games I've played, uh, but we've also only played a little bit, so I don't really know if I'll feel that way after playing, you know, four or five hours or whatever. Uh, but yeah, I'm enjoying it so far. I was thinking it was gonna be a lot like sillier than it actually is. I'm, I'm glad that it doesn't, it hasn't taken that really silly approach, like say Bum Simulator or something like that, which is kind of ridiculous. Uh, I didn't, I didn't really enjoy that game that much. So far, I like it. Uh, we'll see, we'll see how it uh, goes as we continue in the series. Uh, but I do hope you guys enjoyed this first episode. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. Uh, if you're looking for anything to watch while you wait for the next episode, which I do plan to have an episode for Friday. There should be an episode Friday. Um, but if you're looking for anything to watch, check out the front page of our channel. We have 3,000 something videos all sorted by genre. We do play quite a few simulator games these days. I actually just recently created a new section for the simulation games because we do play so many of those. Uh, so if you're looking for those, there's a an entire section of just the simulator games that we play, whether that be like, you know, truck driver or or uh, Car Mechanic Simulator, which we've done two series with. Uh, we played the newest one, and then we played the one before that when they came to console. And most of the simulation games we play are on console. Uh, but we played a farm simulator, a medieval dynasty kind of simulators, kind of survival game simulator mix. Uh, but yeah, we played quite a few of these. Uh, construction Simulator would be another one. Oh, that was that was an interesting one. Uh, it wasn't uh, as good as some of the other ones, but yeah, it was still still pretty fun overall. Uh, so if you're looking for simulator series, we do have quite a few of those on the channel. Do keep two things in mind with those simulator series, though. Uh, most of them are with my wife and co-host Jinx. That's typically uh, how we do uh, these type of games on the channel. We'll play those together, both providing commentary. So the uh, style's a little bit different since there's two of us. And then the second thing to keep in mind is that we usually play these games on console. Uh, so don't play on PC as often. Now myself, I typically only play on PC uh, when I do the series by myself, but I, I usually play strategy games. So if you like strategy games, there's a lot of that on the channel. I uh, just recently played Old World, I uh, played Humankind, and I play a lot of Paradox games, Hearts of Iron 4, Crusader Kings 3, those type of games. So that's typically what I play 
uh, when I play by myself. Uh, so if you enjoy that genre, uh, then you should be able to find a lot to watch. So again, if you're looking for something to watch while you wait for episode two, then go check out that front page. Uh, if you're looking for any links, check out the description of any of our videos. You'll find links to our PayPal, Patreon, and Teespring store if you'd like to help support the channel. You'll also find a link to our Discord if you'd like to join our community. And finally, you'll find links to our Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all that good stuff if you'd like to follow us on there. So again, I do hope you enjoyed this first episode, and I do hope to see you on episode two on Friday. And thanks for watching.